Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. When we are conducting our courses, one of the most popular questions that we get from our participants is that whether we can do these aquaculture activities on our unused properties that are vacant at the moment. And some of these properties are actually on the second floor of the building like you see over here. So in this video, I'll be explaining whether is it possible. So stay tuned. Welcome back guys. For those who are new to RS Culture, we actually produce content with regards to shrimp farming and micro farming using RAS systems or Bioflox systems. So if you like our content, do like and subscribe so you'll get a weekly notification on our latest video. So back to our topic for the day. So as you can see, this is our recent project for soft shell crab farming. And you can see generally, we actually constructed a new warehouse instead of renting out an old one because uh, this is quite a big facility. And this is old project from Brunei that actually constructed 1,000 crab boxes. So the first consideration before you decide on the type of property is the load of the structure. You you have to remember that water actually is very heavy as one cubic meter will always equate to one ton of water and this is actually evident if you look at our shrimp ponds and these are actually about 50 cubic meters so they're actually 50 tons and it's actually quite dangerous if to put them in on second floor level properties so it's not common to see shrimp farm on second floors but it's usually more common to see crab farms on the second floor and we have actually seen it throughout our tenure uh, in aquaculture period so generally, the reason is because the first problem is water is actually very heavy. Some of the structure, even your tanks, might actually have be problematic if the weight is too high. So you need to check with your civil engineers whether the second floor property can withstand the kind of load that you have by calculating the total amount of water that you have in your system. Right. So this is actually a very important part. And the second part is to ensure that generally we have to ensure that our cost of production remains very competitive and one of the main reasons for that cost of production is due to pumping so as you can see generally the flow from the boxes will tend to flow down by gravity and that's the ideal preference for any crab farm production because you want the, the flow to be actually being able to flow down via gravity into your filtration system and your pump simply just picks it back up and pump it back to the boxes so if you look at our new soft shell crab farm uh, that you see over here, we actually have a staggered layer of uh, the first floor. So you can see that the boxes are actually held on a level that is slightly a bit higher than the filtration systems. Okay, as so you see all the way behind. So normally you can usually access the systems by walking all the way towards the end and they are usually the lowest point in the structure. And what tends to do is all of the water from the boxes once pumped into them will flow down by gravity into these filtration systems as you see over here. So it all flows down by gravity and the pump just does a bit of work by pumping them into the filter system. It either is a sand filter or is it a protein schema and another pump will then pump it back to the box. And this is quite common uh, setup and this is the ideal setup because you don't want to be spending a lot of power to pump it there uh, if you can use gravity in the first place. So this is all my clients in Philippines. You can see that the boxes are, are also mounted on the floor directly, um, probably to, to 20 cm height from the ground and the water also flows down into a pool via gravity. You have a pump that just brings it to the water uh, filtration system such as a sand filter and a skimmer and it goes back. So very important systems to ensure that power is actually very efficient. Right, and similarly, you can see for this farm as well, you have soft shell crab boxes. Uh, this is actually for soft shell crab and it's being pumped into not pump it flows gravity into a retention pit so ideally you know this is to protect both the pump and to ensure that you have low power consumption and this is another farm in india which also utilize the same concept uh, we know that is because you can see the boxes are actually very close to the ground um, so we can see that usually the retention pond is actually lower than this and even though you're not constructing a crab farm uh, you for example if you're doing a crab hatchery ideally you know when you're harvesting uh, the larvae from a tank like this you don't want to be pumping out the water to harvest because as you might know that the larvae is actually very very um what we call fragile and over pumping it might actually damage some of its uh 
body structure. So what we want to be doing here is to just release the pipe and let the water flow out via gravity very gently and we will harvest the crablets over and the other side which is you can see over here so this actually really saves a lot of power because you don't want to be pumping where you can rely on gravity and if you're doing it on a second floor unfortunately you'll not be able to dig right so a, a lot of methods on how people actually overcome this problem by not digging any second floor area is to elevate up the boxes as you see over here so these boxes are actually being elevated for one feet and the filter system is actually constructed um, right off the floor so they can allow water to flow from the boxes into the filter while this is actually doable the problem is the boxes have to be raised a bit too high so the problem here is you can see that these boxes is a row of 10 and at this point of time where I'm taking this video you can see that it's actually a bit harder to reach the top layers so you can see my friend over here which is quite tall and he is also not being able to reach the top layer uh, as you can see the top layer remains very high and this is not even a row of 10 right so this is the same problem that our clients in Brunei were facing in such a way that a lot of them because their future system did not actually extend all the way into the ground they had to elevate the boxes a bit higher while this is doable, it is not efficient in terms of operation and operational cost or labor cost will also increase if you have this kind of setup. And generally for aquaculture, we want our cost to be as competitive as possible. right? So this is another setup that requires a lot of climbing and you know your boxes are very high and this actually requires a scaffolding to reach the top layer. Again, the reason is because they did not dig a, a hole in the ground and they simply just let the filter system just stay at the bottom and it's not ideal if you're trying to go for accessibility and very high productive farms okay um as you can see this is the top layer of the farm and this is actually constructed in the shed what has probably been better for this design is to actually construct a pit on the outside to let the water flow out and reduce the level of this uh, boxer so that we can work a bit more efficiently so there are several factors to consider when you are selecting a location. The first is ideally you need to check the water weight, whether the building is able to withstand. The second thing is whether you are able to dig pits because ideally we want to be able to do so so that we can reduce a lot of the power consumption and also labor, increase labor productivity. So that's all for this video. We hope you enjoy and hope to see you back again at RS Aquaculture. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.